Welcome everyone, this is Crown of Glory Reborn and I want to put out this special on healing financial and self-worth wounds, the top 15 lessons that I learned having gone through quite this experience with um, Chiron having been in my second house for the last eight years and I realize some people watching this are not into astrology and they just said, Kai, who? <laughs> okay, just hang with me, all right? Um, you don't have to be in astrology um, for this to be relevant to you. But let me do say that the Aquarians just went through this. If you're Aquarius, then this will maybe help you decompress what we just went through. If you're Pisces, this is a crash course on what's to come. Obviously, if you've got any of those placements in your chart, you know, it might be especially relevant. Regardless, there might be an Aquarian or a Pisces who, you know, is important to you. Um, and regardless of that, I definitely think that this top 15 li um, list of lessons learned um, are going to be relevant to anybody, okay, regardless of sign or what's going on in the astrology. But if you want to go uh, deeper into the astrology and deeper into the lessons where... I get a lot more transparent, a lot more vulnerable with people in a way that I'm not going to put out here freely to any Tom, Dick, or Harry on YouTube, okay? I will have a lot more details on Vimeo, so if you like the lessons and you want to know more, stay tuned to the very end. I'll show you how to get more information on Vimeo, possibly Audible. I'll be putting it on there as well, but let's get into it. Um, the lessons that I learned from this transit, uh, number one, money being a useful fiction. Um, Alan Watts said that it is a measure of wealth. It is not wealth itself. And uh, real wealth consists of monetary resources, energy, and intelligence. And I would like to argue that real wealth is intelligence that creates assets of tangible value. And I'm talking about when you have, you own a home, you own property, you own cars, not that you're on the hook for debt, <laughs> but you own it outright, okay? And if you're in business, tangible resources, assets, you create products as opposed to services. And so that would be my argument is that real wealth is intelligence that creates assets of tangible value. And now the second lesson I learned is we've got to be concerned about um, making sure in our relations with other people that um, we're not trying to do things to prove to others, hey, I'm not self-interested, I'm not greedy. Sometimes what we need to do is get people to prove that to us. Um, it could be something that, um, you know, some of us get on the defensive in relationships where we start asking for things or wanting a fair exchange. And then people have their own insecurities, their own self-worth uh, issues, and then they start projecting that onto you like, oh, you're being greedy to ask for something here. And then you end up compromising yourself, making sacrifices you shouldn't because you're trying to prove, hey, I'm not being greedy. I'm not self-interested when in fact we need to ask other people, hey, why don't you show me that you're not being self-interested whenever I'm asking for a fair, even, balanced exchange. Another lesson that I learned um, during this time because of these um, understandings I had to come to in terms of um, people, people's self-interest, okay, is um, we prove ourselves a lot right with hard work or honesty loyalty because we've been told that this is gonna be rewarded we're gonna be a success if we do these things but um, that is not necessarily true um, and that brings me to lesson three 
most people don't care how good your work is or how long you've been loyal. What they care about is how cheaply or quickly you can do it. They care about how you're profiting and benefiting them. And I'm not agreeing with it. I'm not saying it's right, okay? But um, we have to realize that we're living in a highly narcissistic culture where a lot of people have this mentality of what's in it for me right here, right now. It's this kind of Walmart philosophy of expect more, pay less. This is the reality that we're living in right now. And so lesson number four is that um, we have to realize the forces that are outside of our control. Yes, you can do the work hard, be loyal, be honest, but you've got to understand that you can't control people giving you a fair exchange or compensating you fairly, okay? You've got to focus on what you do have control over um, rather than remain focused on what you don't because there could be a sense of powerlessness that comes out of that if you don't shift the focus onto what you do have control over. Fifth lesson that I learned is that bad decisions are often made when we feel a lack of support in making good ones. So that opens us up to a lot of vulnerability when we are not supported and making good decisions. And um, through those life experiences, I've learned to um, realize that some people, they are well-meaning, but they're broke. Like they want to help you, but they can't. Other people, they're not broke. They can help you, but they're not well-meaning. So it is really important to surround yourself with people who are not only well-meaning, but also not broke. Very hard to find, but sometimes you might need to clear clear your uh, <laughs> friends list so you can make room for those to come in. Lesson six, uh, look at how people um, use and leverage power. Pay attention to positioning, financial positioning um, for yourself and those around you. Um, recognize who is and isn't empowering you and what's motivating them to do that. What's motivating their choices. Lesson number seven. Allow other people to prove that they're not taking advantage of you, nor are they willing to let others take advantage of you. Um, I was in some... Uh, circumstances which I talk about more in depth on on Vimeo uh, for those of you who are interested but um, I was going through some very difficult times and because I was not able to perform or give at a level that it was expected of me or what would have been normal um, there were some insecurities raised in other people around me and they began projecting it onto me that, hey, um, I, need to, I need you to prove to me that you're not taking advantage of me because I'm feeling afraid like you're taking advantage of me because you're not performing at the level that I think. And so I ended up making some compromises to prove, hey, I'm not taking advantage of you but it turned out really to be um, quite a bad arrangement that was a bit, you know, I, I would say, you know, led me down a road of, of dealing with some exploitation that was totally unnecessary. And I came to this lesson of really having to confront myself and ask why was it more important for me to prove to another person that I wasn't taking advantage of them um, than for them to prove to me that they didn't want me to be taken advantage of by others. So really key lesson. And then number eight, um, what people are willing to pay really has nothing to do with your worth. Sometimes it's a reflection of their own inability to value others or to show value, okay? Sometimes what something is worth is not what the market will, will bear. I mean, yeah, maybe you paid $300,000 for that home, but guess what? Nobody's going to pay for that, <laughs> you know, or you, you, you paid, you know, maybe, maybe the house was appraised for that, but right now the economy's taking a dip and the, the buyers are not there to pay that amount. You see what I'm saying? 
um, what you're worth and what people are willing to pay could be two totally different things. But you have to look at what value you're putting on it, not really depending so much on the value that other people are putting on it. Let's say you're working on your family or uh, you're writing a book or a project that people never pay for. Is it worthless? Does it make you worthless? What makes you and your work valuable? You've got to look beyond what people are willing to pay and see the value beyond that. Lesson number nine, some people are actually threatened by your achievements. They actually don't want the most qualified candidate. I know, big shocker. We've been told this all our lives. They're looking for the most qualified candidate. No, no, because that person might take the um, interviewer's job or might expose their incompetence. So um, this idea of working hard, making yourself irreplaceable, indispensable that uh, many from my generation were brainwashed with, definitely that was a popular concept during the 80s, to make yourself irreplaceable, indispensable, um, not exactly true. Some people are very threatened by your achievements and they're jealous. They're not happy, right? So um, if, you know, you've, you've worked hard and you've not been getting the job officer and you're like, what is this about? It could be, you know, that some of you have been denied work um, over this type of issue. And yeah, maybe some of you were told, well, you didn't qualify, that you weren't competent. And then you go get the, the qualifications, you come back, they still deny you because competence had nothing to do with it in the first place. Um, it was merely an excuse to cover an underlying insecurity. Um, so don't let denials think any less, allow you to think any less of yourself. Number 10, a uh, lesson I learned is that if you're trained to be an employee, but your life purpose destiny is to be an employer or self-employed, then your career is going to be unnecessarily difficult. Your career path, I should say, will be unnecessarily difficult. And when you go to the average person and ask for advice about this, who has also been trained to be an employee, which I talk about why that is happening at such a grand scale. I talk about that on Vimeo for those of you interested. But, you know, the conventional advice is that you just need to go get another job. That's a solution to everything. Just go get another job. <laughs> Wrong. You're not supposed to be getting a job. You're supposed to be making jobs, not taking jobs. Then it's going to be really difficult for you until you make that shift. And um, this is where knowing yourself, being self-aware, knowing your natal chart placements like your north node, your midhaven, your fortune placement, what's going on with your 10th house, your Mars, your Ascendant, so on. This will really come in handy to help you become more self-aware of what your life purpose destiny is. And for those of you who don't already know, you know, if you want a private reading on that, come to me, I can help you. <laughs> but that's just a side note. Um, I mainly brought it up to emphasize the importance of knowing thyself because if you're an eagle and you're surrounded by a bunch of chickens who are telling you that you need to just uh, stop trying to fly and be a good little chicken, you know, <laughs> um, y you got to stop listening to those people and surround yourself with others who um, understand the struggle of going from being an employee to self-employed and they can encourage you in making that shift. Now on to lesson 11. Weakness is preyed upon in this culture. So there's nothing really spiritually edifying about playing small or weak financially. It hurts individuals, children, families. Um, and so by strengthening your financial position, you are also strengthening yourself, your children, your family, and that's very spiritually edifying. And I think a lot of us get into this mindset of, oh, that's carnal stuff, that's 3D stuff, but we, you know, when you get really into, you know, what's going on 
spiritually and that that's that's you know better to be more high-minded on the spiritual stuff but no we got to remember we're put here in this 3d to you know learn certain lessons and be grounded in this reality and figure out how do we manifest those ideals in reality yeah part of our soul's journey lesson 12 um, that I learned is that you got to work what works I say this a lot on my channel if you want the best chance of manifesting those ideals in this reality then you've got to face the facts about what's working and what isn't as painful and inconvenient as that may be and please know that I don't say this at all in a trite way um, my background story I'm not putting it out here for anybody but yes it's on Vimeo if you're interested and I will share with you, you know, the, um, the brutal truth about, you know, what it has taken for me to manifest my ideals in this reality. Um, maybe not what you want to hear, but very much pro possibly what you need to hear um, if you want to get a breakthrough, um, especially any of you who are like single moms or you feel unsupported in some way that you're handling burdens on your own that you can't bear, definitely check that out um, because I will speak to that and resources um, on Vimeo. 13, lesson 13 is that people pay for what they value. Um, usually, okay. Discover what people value, bring it, and then they'll pay within reason okay there's yes there's a lot of gimme jimmies out there all right um, some of you it's about finding the people who value what you value and being willing to pay for what you bring right certain audiences value certain things right like if I put you know my content on one forum it's gonna do better than another because it's about what that audience values and so if you're like a business owner, which I speak to as well, or you're trying to be self-employed, you're trying to get a side hustle going, I definitely have a lot of information about how to repackage things to um, make them more sellable um, at price points that reach different markets, different people, while also maintaining some profitability on your end so you can have a sustainable business. Um, and yeah, dealing with the people who are, you know, asking for free work, pro bono work or whatever. This happens a lot with self-employed people. How do you do that? Because you've got to stay alive and pay your bills. How do you deal with that? Um, you've got to find a way to, um, you know, bring what people value or repackage it in a way where they can pay for what they value. Uh, lesson 14, your value is something that the world can't give or take away. You are born with it. Abundance is your divine destiny. Look at what I'm doing here on this channel. I didn't learn how to do any of this in college. None of it. And to run this business, I didn't have to go get any kind of certifications. I didn't have to get into debt. Um, I didn't have to get anybody's stamp of approval. It's something that is, it's in my birth chart. It's my divine destiny to give out to humanity, okay, with all my ninth through 12th house placements in my natal chart. You know, it's my divine destiny to do this. And my intuitive gifts are something that God gave me. Nobody can give it or take it away. And so, um... I talk a lot about tapping into those gifts that are already within you and how do you um, create wealth abundance out of thin air, out of something that is destined for you. Um, like what I'm doing right now, I'm teaching a lot of people based on life experience, the school of hard knocks, not, you know, get into debt university <laughs> all right it's a school of hard knocks all right so you have to look at um really what has been given to you at a creative level okay what is your life purpose destiny and um i do definitely talk about tapping into that because you know we're entering into an era where a lot of people's jobs are being automated 
And so it's, it's really critical that if you want to survive in the coming decade, you tap into that gift, that God-given gift that is a creative talent that cannot be automated because this is something that only humans can do, like, you know, music, art, writing. I could go on, but let's get on to 15, the last lesson learned here in this series. Um, your financial struggles aren't bigger than others. When people have more, they also have more to lose. This is something that I have learned um, over the last few years of getting surrounded by people who are not broke down, busted, and disgusted. They've actually attained more, yet, you know, they are not immune from failure and loss like the rest of us. And so um, I've learned through. Um, some people who are really good at grounded manifestation in this reality, right? Um, how to make more solid um, decisions with my money. And I've also learned that there's illusions of wealth and illusions of prosperity and illusions of scarcity and we have to look beyond it. That person who lives in that big house uh, or drives that really nice car or whatever, um, maybe there's more going on than meets the eye. Perhaps they lost their job and now they've got, you know, more responsibilities to answer to. And maybe they don't have friends who don't care if they lose. Maybe they have friends who are very uh, achievement conscious. And so the pressure is on them even more. The stakes are even higher for them. And so you never know what people are going through. You never know, even if they are financially solid, what it took for them to gain the position that they're at in life, what they had to sacrifice, what they had to um, risk and lose. So um, when we are mindful of this, it helps us to keep our exchanges equal with people. And I think it's really important because when people misperceive that somebody has it easier than them, they will excuse themselves from shortchanging that person. And then they start sowing seeds of um, inequivalent exchange. And that's just not good. You don't want to sow that because you don't want to reap it, right? But definitely um, that wraps up those 15 lessons and I go into so much more detail on Vimeo where I talk about uh, from the beginning you know all these socioeconomic conditions that could yes make you feel like things are powerless and out of your control um, and the reality of it the reality of the job market and um, you know the student loan debt crisis and I get really deep into that and um, then in part two I talk about um, you know these kind of projection issues that occur with people where you know other people are bringing their self-worth insecurities into the equation and it's kind of raising your awareness to your own self-worth issues and what I learned during those times but um, and then finally, when I close the series out, I talk more about getting that personal empowerment, building value back into yourself. It goes from a very external focus into an internal focus as the series progresses to um, help you get your power back, hopefully. And so, yeah, I'm putting that out there for those of you who are interested. And it's also um, my way of being able to feel safer opening up at a level that um, hopefully the sharing makes the uh, learning experience more relatable, right? Rather than me giving you facts, you're really seeing how does this play out in reality in a real life situation. Um, but like I said, that's not going to be for everybody here on YouTube. It's kind of personal, right? When we talk about money, really personal. And yes, when Chiron, by the way, is in the second house, it impacts all other houses, right? And I'll show you how that plays out on Vimeo. If you're interested, 
please come on over to Vimeo and um, check out the videos. They're $3.99 each. I always keep them easily affordable, easily accessible. I hope they bless you. Thanks again for your support.